This is just a quick review and some install information on uh, different options that you can do for installing Android um, aftermarket head units, or really any aftermarket head unit in uh, Mercedes, uh, specifically between 2003 and 2010, I believe the years are. This is an E-Class E320 CDI, uh, 2005. Um, it really, the problems with these cars with installing aftermarket head units is the audio system is pretty much entirely wired in fiber optics. So the challenge that you had to overcome in order to install an aftermarket head unit previously was to entirely bypass the fiber optics and install a new amp and wire it up in the trunk and uh, people would do that. I mean, I, I wouldn't hack up my wiring harness and all that kind of stuff to do that, but um, now there is another option and it's been an option for a couple years, but now it's priced a lot better. Um, it's a uh, fiber optics interface. It basically converts the analog output from the uh, uh, aftermarket head unit into the digital signal that interfaces with the fiber optic system. Um, so it's basically plug and play right from your head unit all the way through the fiber optics to the uh, amp. I'm retaining the original amp and I didn't have to, you know, hack up the wiring harness and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I love it. And I'll include the link to both the head unit and the fiber optics interface that I got in the description. Um, I really don't have any complaints with either of them. Even the Chinese aftermarket head unit works really well. Uh, the CAN bus interface, uh, interfaces, uh, I can change the volume, uh, I can change the track and the uh, stations, uh, the phone buttons work on, on the steering wheel and uh, I can see track information on the uh, instrument cluster. I'll turn the key in here and show you. Um, it takes a minute to load, but... Um, the uh, head unit also, the way it uh, turns on and turns off, is uh, the same as factory. You can turn the key off and the radio will stay on until you pull the key out. Um, and vice versa, when you put the key in, before even turning it on to accessory, the radio turns on as well, which is exactly the way it was uh, with the factory radio. Um, like I said, track information you can view from here. It hasn't loaded yet because probably because yeah, see there. Um, I can see the FM information there. I can change it from the buttons here, and uh, it it just works great. I can view track information when I'm uh, uh, in in music too. Um, what else am I missing here? Uh, oh, the only issue that I had, uh, no issue with the head unit. It works great. Um, was with the fiber optics interface. Um, not an issue anymore, I fixed it. Originally, uh, since this is a diesel, and I probably have the same problem with a gas or two, I was getting some engine noise uh, through the speakers, so I installed a ground loop isolator on the RCA connections going into the fiber optics interface. Uh, by the way, I installed that since it didn't fit in here. I installed it down here in the kick panel down here. Pops off with a couple Torx screws. Uh, pretty easy. And I installed it down there. I put a ground loop isolator on the RCA connections and the ground wire, and that completely eliminated the uh, engine noise. So that worked great. Uh, as for the the CAN bus connections, it's all the way over here. If you pop this off um, and then pull the carpet back, all the way up here in this area um, is a uh, as the main CAN bus bridge, if you just splice onto two of those wires, one's brown and the other one is brown with a red tracer along it, uh, that gives you your uh, all your steering wheel controls and accessories and illumination and backup camera and everything. Um, what am I missing? Uh, I'm going to do a complete uh, install on uh, or install information kind of DIY on Ben's World about this. Uh, I'm a member there, so um, any questions or concerns or any information, troubles you guys are having, uh, feel free to comment in the comments and uh, ask me any questions. Thank you.